So I'm going to talk about this study. It's only preliminary results. But the aim is to explore whether persons spontaneously mention aspects of meaning in life when narrating on existential loneliness. Um, and this study um, is based on eight in-depth narrative interviews from the loan study that I talked about yesterday. Uh, so it's a secondary analysis of eight of the interviews. And these eight interviews is with nursing home residents. And we use template analysis. It's kind of a thematic analysis. And it's qualitative, of course. Um, and the sample consists of six women and two men. And they are between 80 and 101 years old, with a median, median of 94 years old. So this is uh, rather old people who have a lot of experiences. And you can say that in template analysis, when you start reading the interviews, you look for patterns. Can you see in any patterns in the data? So I started to read the interviews and look for, can I see any patterns? I, I knew already when they talk about existential loneliness, but do they talk anything about meaning in life at the same time? So uh, the first patterns show that they talk, of course, both about the easy and the difficult. They talk about relationships, both the good and the broken ones, uh, the bereavement, the losses. And it's easy to think about existential loneliness. But when they talk about their good relationships, both the ones they've had and the ones they have now, um, there are some patterns regarding meaning in life. They talk about memories from their past life and also hope for the future. Maybe not always hope for themselves, but hope for their grandchildren. They talk about attachment to place, to feel secure and homeness in the place where they live. But uh, they also talk about uh, situations when they don't feel at home in the place where they live. They talk about possibility to influence their everyday life, to um, influence the place and what they would like to do. They talk about that they feel important to others, valuable and worthy as a person, but also when they feel not worthy, not so important, when they feel that they don't have any, um, any place in our society. And they talk about physical symptoms when they are relieved or when they have a body in pain and a body that limits them. So this was kind of the first patterns that we saw in the text or that I saw, that I discussed with my colleagues. Um, <clears throat> these patterns led us further into discussions about views on meaning in life and existential loneliness, because this six patterns covers a lot. So when we met, it was actually in Paris in November. So it's rather many months have passed. We choose Martel and Stegos uh, definition regarding meaning in life, the same as you told about yesterday, Julie, of coherence, purpose, and significance. And we choose Bonn for Tengland and Remborn's definition regarding existential loneliness. So I, I read the interviews one more time with these two definitions in mind to look at the patterns. What is meaning in life and existential loneliness in the patterns? Um, 
this is a table, an overview of meaning in life and existential loneliness, respectively, in the interviews. Uh, and you can see in some of the quotations, they talk about all of the aspects of meaning in life. But in some interviews, there are also missing parts of meaning in life. And it's the same for existential loneliness. And of course, uh, there's a lot you can discuss with a table like this. Mm. And Jesse, I know you, you, you thought that this was interesting. <laughs> um, however, I would like to, to share a narration with you. Um, but maybe I, I, I just, after, uh, the table. I would just like to show you um, it's very preliminary results before I, I share the narrative. Uh, the narrations cover situations of both and, both the good and easy in life and the difficult. Uh, and it covers when they feel confirmed and seen, but also when they feel neglected and rejected. Uh, their narrations covers when they are able to enjoy life, but also when they suffer. And when they feel hope for the future, but also when they wish that tomorrow never will come. So this was rather interesting to read in their narrations that uh, there are many aspects of meaning in life when they talk about existential loneliness. And now I come to uh, a transcript from one of the interviews. Uh, this is a man talking about when he felt existential loneliness. The interviewer asked earlier in life and so on, has there ever been a time when you have felt deeply alone on a special occasion? It's been when I was at boarding school, when I was out, and I was misbehaving, and it's very quiet. I had to go in and sit in the room or go to bed. Then I felt lonely. Right, so this feeling of loneliness came when you kind of couldn't be with the others and be in your own room, and yes, when I was expelled. Then the child goes out and I know what it feels like to be expelled. Mm. How does it feel? Can you describe the feeling? Yes, it feels very hard in my heart. Mm. Have you ever, is there any time since adulthood when you have felt something similar that has touched you on this? No, it's been, it's been when I've been in hospital. When I've been at home with my family, it's never felt like that. No, it's been when you've been in the hospital and been, yes, it's there. Mm -hmm. And I've been so sick, so I knew that the next day might not exist. But I got my strength back and I've come back. And this yellow, uh, small words, says something very important about existential loneliness. He goes back to, to his experience when he was expelled and how it feels in his heart. But in his narration, it's also very clear when he doesn't feel this experience of existential loneliness. When I've been at home with my family, it's never felt like that. And that could be an expression of when he feels meaning in life. I would like to share one more narration. And this is a lady who talks back and forth. I have some thoughts. No, I'm one of those who take them thoughts when they come. I don't, I can't say that I worry about anything. I can't say. And then when my daughter comes home, she lives just a mile from here. I mean, she calls almost every day and so. So then I feel an extra security. Have you always handled life that way? 
you told me that you take one day at a time or that you don't worry so have you i think still less now but i guess i've always been able to adapt to the situation that comes but it's worse now there's a lot you like to have done but can't i haven't been in a shop for four months and then she laughs then there are nice patios here that they sit outside a lot when it's summer and i look forward to that that they offer me to come and visit me but as soon as it's a bit then i feel that no i can't but i don't miss it but i know that now now it's like that it's double yes it is this lady she talks about a lot of things in this narration and here is just some example of what can be linked to meaning in life. I can't say that I worry about anything. And she feels an extra security. But still less now. But she also says that she's always been able to adopt. And also that she look forward to something. But she also says that it's worse now. And there's a lot you like to have done, but you can't. And she feels that she can't, no. But she also says that it's double. So the results are in progress. But there are some interesting, overarching themes in the narrations. So the persons talked about their past life, their present life, and thoughts about the future, and can be connected to both existential loneliness and meaning in life. And existential loneliness and meaning in life, I can't say that they are intertwined, but somehow they're, then in the narrations, they they share the same place. And Somehow there is also a need for balance between the difficult and the good in life. And of course, we have asked them for narrations about existential loneliness, but still they talk about much more in life. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was just a sneak peek of what I'm working with in this study together with 